a song to you today. This song was uh, hidden for about eight years. This song is about the Holy Spirit. The theme of our three day is the Holy Spirit. Those who came in the morning, how many people were in the morning? The Lord blessed us. You said about your brain. Did you see a change? The Lord specifically told me to pray about the brain of a lot of people. I am blessed. I hope you are blessed. Amen. God is going to do amazing things. Hallelujah. Okay, this song, you'll be surprised. Good, Achu. Can you make it bigger? Can you all see that, saints? Of course, uh, this is in Malayalam. It simply means, come, let us be together and enjoy the gift of the, which is the Holy Spirit. That's very simple, okay? You will be surprised. This song was first uh, published during Christmas. And my, we went, wherever church I went, you know, this song doesn't have anything to do with Christmas. But this was inaugurated during Christmas. We used to go to different parts of Trivandrum, different junctions. We used to stand in front of those places and sing this song. People would come together. Then we would show a lot of skit. Next year we're going to do a lot of things. Amen. We wanted to do that this year, but something didn't happen. We will plan much ahead. Hallelujah. So this is the way the song goes, Rina and Achu. Help me sing this song. Go up. Go, go to her. Nityamam shnehatin nuravidame. Nityam nin snehatil vadhichiruva. Nityamam snehatin nuravida me. Nityam nin snehatil vadhichiruva. I king al sami be amartianam nadende. Ashwa saganam karistan parishutatma ve. I king al sami be amartianam nadende. Ashwa saganam karistan parishutatma ve. Padidam, padidam, anandatal moodidam, agadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadad
ஆனந்தத்தால் கூறிரா ஆகிரும் நாதிரும் ஆனந்தத்தால் மூடிரும் பிராணனும் ஜீவனும் தேகவும் நீ நல்வியால் ஆனந்தாபிஷேகம் தந்தும் நித்தியமாம் ஸ்நேகத்தின் உறவிடமே நித்தியம் நின் ஸ்நேகத்தில் வர்த்திச்சிடுவா நித்தியமாம் ஸ்நேகத்தின் உறவிடமே நித்தியம் நின் ஸ்நேகத்தில் வர்த்திச்சிடுவா ஆயக்கங்கள் சமீபே அமர்த்தியனம் நாதன்பே அஸ்வாசகனம் காரியஸ்தன் பரிசுத்தாத்மாவே ஆயக்கங்கள் சமீபே அமர்த்தியனம் நாதன்பே அஸ்வாசகனம் காரியஸ்தன் பரிசுத்தாத்மாவே ஆடிராம் பாடிராம் ஆனந்தத்தால் கூடிரா ஆகதன் நாதன் ஆனந்தத்தால் மூடிரும் பிராணனும் ஜீவனும் தேகவும் நீ நல்கிய ஆனந்தாபிஷேகம் தந்திரும் புத்திரனே தன்னதோ நல்வரத்தினாய் புத்தனாம் கானங்கள் பாடிடுவானா புத்திரனே தன்னதோ நல்வரத்தினாய் புத்தனாம் கானங்கள் பாடிடுவானாய் சுதனே தன்ன ஸ்நேகமே மக்கள் அவகாசமே ஆரம்பாகத்வமென்னும் ஸ்தோத்திரம் ஸ்துதியும் சுதனே தன்ன ஸ்நேகமே மக்கள் அவகாசமே மானம் பாகத்வம் என்னும் ஸ்தோத்திரம் ஸ்துதியும் பாடிராம் பாடிராம் ஆனந்தத்தால் கூடிராம் ஆகதன் ஆனந்தத்தால் மூடிரோ காணனும் ஜீவனும் தேகவும் நீ நல்கியால் ஆனந்தாபிஷேகம் தத்தும் நல்வரம் பொன்வரம் சிரேஷ்டமாம்பரம் நல்கிரும் மக்களுக்கு திவ்யதானந்தா நல்வரம் பொன்வரம் சிரேஷ்டமாம்பரம் நல்கிரும் மக்களுக்கு திவ்யதானந்தா தன் பொன் சிநேக இஷ்டத்தால் மக்களுக்கு அவகாசமா சேகத்தின் சம்பூர்ணதா தாதன் தந்தீனும் தன் பொன் சிநேக இஷ்டத்தால் மக்களுக்கு அவகாசமா சேகத்தின் சம்பூர்ணதா தாதன் தந்தீனும் தேகவும் நீ நல்கியார் ஆனந்தாபிஷேகம் I thank God for that uh, particular church and pastor. We used to go from house to house, junction to junction. We used to hire uh, mics, take drums, stand in the corner and speak the gospel. My children used to come. They were very young. And uh, you remember that, don't you? Arena used to come. And that is a different thing, totally different thing. You just stand outside and sing the Lord's songs. It is awesome. A lot of people came to the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, I should show me that YouTube. Let me show you a YouTube presentation. This is all for all of us and this is also for all the young people today. Thank you all of you who prayed today. Awesome. Hallelujah. Chuck. Good Benji. Good. And all of you. I think Kesia tried to pray. She made some noise. Okay. That's it's not working. I don't think this has a sound presentation but this is very 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 clear it has clarity these people who prepared this their english is not good don't look at the stand of their english but this is really beautiful the unseen spiritual world that's the thing here every every human being has physical sight into the physical world so a lot of people there Can you see? Yeah, no, thank you. So, yeah, good, good. The child of God and the disciple of Christ can see in the physical world and in the spiritual world. This is Daniel who is known as a devoted family man. 
He is a disciple of Christ in this world. That's Daniel really. That is you and me. That's our real spiritual stand. He also is a soldier of God in this unseen world. Can you see? See, an enormous amount of people are being escorted and enslaved by unseen demons. Those are demons behind. See, really what's happening? Not guitar music. This is rock music given to the devil, okay? Don't think anybody playing the guitar has demons around them, no. Daniel's atheist colleagues in the physical world. Every demon who enslaves the people pulls back in fear. See how they move around and they see Daniel. They are afraid of you and me. Demons are afraid of you and me. That's a church. The demons cannot enter the revival church because the Holy Spirit is within the Christians. These believers, people are believers in a different church. Most Christians are being deceived and used by the unseen enemy, Satan. Every family seems like a good and happy family in this world. The demons have attacked every family home everywhere. There is Daniel. He is free from them all. Daniel arrives home in a physical world. Look at the angel all over Daniel's house. Daniel's house is being protected by angels of God against Satan just like our homes. Do you know we have angels all around? Yes. While Daniel is at home, according to this people, you don't need uh, God. I mean, they don't need angels. Sorry, they need God. Daniel's wife is dying because Daniel has authority over his family with the Holy Spirit of truth. In a, this is a physical world. In the unseen spiritual world, that is Daniel's wife. She's escorted wherever she goes. And this is very true. Daniel's children in school in the physical world. <coughs> God anointed Daniel to be head of his family as husband and father. God has given Daniel the responsibility to take good care of his family and to pray over them. We should do that over our children. And then we read, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Ephesians 6.12 Okay, I want to show you one more thing. This is, this is very interesting. Go back. Look at this. Sorry, it's not touch screen. Okay, watch this. Sorry, forgive us. Okay. A huge snake in the church. Not in our church. The animation is based on a true story. Okay. It's only for five, six minutes, I think. I have to check it out. Eight minutes. Okay. Is that okay with you? Hmm? Yeah. The 
The prophet attended a local church, Christian church for a few years. That's a church. Preacher is preaching. They're all listening to the church. This man is the prophet of God. He's sitting there in the pew, okay? Prophet, I'm not pleased with the people. That is Jesus. I don't accept this church. For they have hidden sins in their heart. That's why Jesus doesn't accept them. I'm going to open your eyes so that you can see with spiritual eyes. Has God spiritual eyes? A huge snake is in the church. And this man is surprised. This is not a good church, okay? Don't think that happens in every church. It's a bad church. <laughs> Why do you think he is not biting him, biting them? God is protecting them. Okay, we'll put a stop there. Please go back home and watch it, what the rest of it, uh, you know, it's very, very interesting. Um, this is the uh, F-A-U-L-K 600, Falk 600. Check it out in uh, YouTube at home, sir. Can you? Okay. What is it? What is it? So what did you say? Whenever you know, the preacher is preaching, demons can stop you from receiving what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you. And how to overcome it. That's our point. It's to receive the Holy Spirit. You cannot overcome any battle in this world without the Holy Spirit. This is necessary. It is not a luxury. It is necessary. In, 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 in I don't know which year we went to a remote place in Kerala called Palakkad. Many of you are from Palakkad. And the Holy Spirit told me, the Lord told me, the people must first be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I told the pastor of my church, he said, what's your hurry? Wait. Let them come to repentance. Let them learn and let me teach them a lot of things. You see, starting with the Holy Spirit is success. Christian life, if you can start with the Holy Spirit, you made it. A lot of people do not know that you can receive power for daily living in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is not just for ministering. It is for your life. Actually, it is your life that you are ministering. You understand that? When you receive the Holy Spirit, you become witnesses. Neil, Neil is a good boy. You are a good boy. Okay. Look, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you don't receive the Holy Spirit just to do miracles or just to preach. You receive the Holy Spirit for your life. Look, Acts 1.8. Let's go to Acts 1.8. We will come back to John 14. We are talking about the Holy Spirit. Okay, I, I will be more straight. I will be more, yes. Uh, I am receiving uh, good, good uh, you know, suggestions. I really receive it. Thank you. I will be more direct and more specific. And definitely, 
I also in in 2015 last year by November, I was thinking of big, big making a messages more uh, what shall a structured. Yes, I am for that. Somebody said Hallelujah, Amen. Amen. For for many of you, uh, I think we need to make it clearer. Thank you. Yes, I agree with that. So today we are going to speak about the importance of God's Holy Spirit. Why is the Holy Spirit of God very important? This morning we talked about it. This morning I would like you to go back and check out the YouTube. Uh, you know, the YouTube committee will uh, make sure that they will put it on. Go back, check it. It's in Malayalam. Those who know Malayalam, you can follow that. What I simply said is, you must have the Holy Spirit. And if there is something in your heart which is keeping the Holy Spirit from staying there, repent to God and get rid of it. Let the Holy Spirit live there. That was message number one today morning. Today we will look into John 14. There is something that the Lord has put there. We're going to study that. But right now, before we go there, we'll quickly... Look to this verse. Acts 1 8. Let's read that. Just a quick word there. Acts 1 8. Yes. Jesus himself is telling his disciples after you shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Okay? The Holy Spirit coming upon you, you shall receive power. For your baptism, you should pray for that. Lord, let the Holy Spirit come upon me. Hallelujah. As soon as you're baptized, you are entitled to receiving the Holy Spirit. You don't have to wait even one more day. The minute you are baptized in water, you can be baptized in Holy Spirit. All right? So pray. Now here Jesus is saying, you guys, you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He's coming upon the entire personality. Christ is coming over you, upon you. He's taking all over you. He's kind of hugging you and never letting go of you. Amen? That is the meaning. And when that happens, power begins to come. Power to overcome sin. Power to overcome evil thoughts. Power to uh, overcome that hatred. Power to overcome everything. Power to get up in the spirit of the Lord. You need that power. Without the Holy Spirit, this is impossible. Okay, I made my point. We need the Holy Spirit for power, for life, and for ministry. Is it clear to all of you children? Okay, amen. Let's go to John chapter 14 now. Let's go to John 14. We were looking into verses 16 and 17. And this morning the Lord ministered. He touched the brain of a lot of people. Anybody has any visible manifestations should say, you're most welcome to say. He touched, he asked me to pray specifically for the brain of a lot of people. I'm sure you'll all be much better. If you have a brain problem, the anointing is there. He will definitely touch you. Okay, I'm going to read for you from verse uh, 17. Of John 14, all of you little children, all of you can read the Bible. I want you to focus on the Bible. Even the spirit of truth who the world cannot receive because it doth not see him, neither knoweth him. But you, my disciples who have been walking with me, you know him for he dwelleth with you. So even when the disciples were walking with Jesus, the Holy Spirit was inside them. Amen. But the Holy Spirit had to come upon them because they needed to receive power. I will explain that another day, not right now. And shall be new. Then Jesus tells them, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That, that shows to you the difference between Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is already inside you. But Jesus is saying, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That is sometimes when you feel, today you felt the presence of God in the, in the church. Sometimes it's like that when they worship, when the preaching is there, sometimes you feel a special presence of God. That is Jesus himself coming sometimes in the Holy Spirit. Amen. I always desire it for the church. Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more, but you see me because I live, you shall live also. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. Which day? When I am with my Father's right side, you are in me and I am in you. Now verse 21, he that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved by my father. I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him and we will come unto him. And make our residence with him. He that loves me not keeps not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine. But the father's which send me. These things have I spoken to you. Being yet present with you. Now listen. But the comforter. Which is the Holy Ghost. Who the father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. 
and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have now heard that I said unto you, I go away and I come again unto you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Amen? Okay, let's look at the true marks of the Holy Spirit. There are so many things, two things in this chapter, in this paragraph which I have read today, two things which tell me about the genuineness of the Holy Spirit. In the morning session, we needed the, we spoke about the need of the Holy Spirit. In this session, we are talking about the genuineness of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people talk about Holy Spirit. They say we have Holy Spirit. Uh, this The other day I was talking, counseling to a young person and that person asked me, Pastor, I go to such and such a church. They are against your teaching. They are against Pentecostal teaching. But they claim to have the Holy Spirit. How do you know the right spirit? Number one, let's read that. You tell me. Verse 17. We already discussed this in the morning. He's the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. What is the truth? Not the truth that comes from your personality, but the word of God. The Holy Spirit and God's word are the same. When I say they are same, I mean they are one. Just like the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and God's word is one. Okay, so when you read here, the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of truth, people of God, he will always stand with God's written and spoken word. He, there is no difference. It's not that Bible says something and the Holy Spirit says another thing. No. The Holy Spirit is not paranoid. The Holy Spirit is not a divisive person. The Holy Spirit is a unifying person. Whatever is written in God's word, you have to agree with that. If you are under the Holy Ghost, you will say, I can't agree with that. Probably I find it difficult to agree with that. But I believe the Holy Spirit will empower me to believe that. You know, a lot of, lot of, lot of wrong doctrines have come from the Bible because the one who is handling God's word did not like the word of God. The word of God, for example, the word of God, the Holy Spirit told him or the word of God said, same-sex marriage is wrong. The man of God probably was living in sin. He said, no, 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 I can't agree with that. He is disagreeing with the truth. Immediately what happens? He begins to move away from the conditions of the Holy Spirit. That is why you should read it and make it very clear. The Holy Spirit and God's word, which is the truth, agree in one. Amen? That's the first mark of knowing if this is really the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit agrees with the entire book. I'm going to ask you questions. What's the first thing? The Holy Spirit agrees with the word of truth or the truth. Number one, the genuine Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit of God agrees with God's word. God's word said it. He agrees with that. Okay, let's move on. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Verse 19, yet a little while and the world seeth me no more, but you see me because I live, you shall live also. At that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, you in me and I in you. He that hath my commandments, he keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. Come and, come and count with me, saints, how many times love is... I'm not going to speak a big message. We're going to minister to one another. Now I want to tell you the three marks of genuine Holy Spirit, okay? Tell me, now you re read this with me up to verse 26 and tell me how many times love is mentioned there. Let's go. Well, I'm starting from verse 21, okay? Count. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me, number one. And he that loveth me too, shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not I Iscariot, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself unto us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Love how many times has been mentioned? I hope you are counting four, five, good. And my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me, not Keepeth not my sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Verse 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I said. How many times is love mentioned? Seven times is? No? Six? Six? Okay, we'll agree it's. 
How much? Seven. All right. Seven or six. It is mentioned. Yes, Neil? Eight. Okay. He, he, brought, a, he brought a conclusion and peace. He said eight. <laughs> oh, good boy. It is mentioned so many times. Genuine. We are talking about the genuineness of Holy Spirit. Genuine Holy Spirit will always conclude in love. Genuine Holy Spirit will always promote love. Genuine Holy Spirit will always come against the spirit of division. He will always bring love and more love. This is how you know the mark of the Holy Spirit. What is the first mark of the Holy Spirit? He agrees with the truth which is the word of God. What is the second part of the Holy Spirit? He brings love. Two things I have said. Amen. How do we know? Let's go to Romans 1 uh, chapter 5 and verses 5. Let us look at the Holy Spirit and love. Holy Spirit and love. John 5, 5, I'm sorry, Romans 5, 5. Let's go there. We'll come back here. Okay. Ah, hope makes not ashamed. It's very clearly and directly written here. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. By? So when people say, I have the Holy Ghost in me. What is the th genuineness? I love Jesus. I love God. I love the brothers and sisters in the church no matter what. And of course, I respect the world. In fact, in fact, talking about love, God so loved the world. And when Paul says, I'm sorry, John says, do not love the world. It's a totally different context. Do not love the world without Jesus. But with the world, love every soul in the world. Respect them. That is why during seasons like Christmas, we go out, we plan to call people because we love them. We want to tell them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please understand that correctly. Let me quickly tell you this, this condition, these things. If you have the love of the Holy Spirit inside you, you will first love God the Father. Two, you will love your own people, which is our family, large family. Three, you will begin to respect the world because love always comes from respect. Did you hear that, children? If you want to love your ch parents, respect them first. That is why in the Bible, in the commandments, love, honor your parents. Honor your parents. Love will automatically follow. Pa husbands, wives, respect them. You know why husbands and wives lose love? Because over a period of time, they become just like the chair in the house. Oh, I have seen this chair for so many days. From the time I, I bought this house, the court was there. A kind of familiarity which breeds contempt. That is how husbands and wives, fathers, mothers, children, always remember your father or mother is irreplaceable. Your husband's irreplaceable. Wives, irreplaceable. There is nobody like that one person in your lives. You see how much you should respect uh, and honor your parents and husbands and wives. Amen. When we do that, love begins to flow. In the same way, we, we respect people outside. When we respect people outside, what happens? Love, genuine love begins to Flow from us. Did you get that people of God? So the Holy Spirit is essentially a spirit of love. No doubt about it. No, no change about it. No difference about it. Now, uh, we have talked about the distinction in love. I won't take it tonight. It's already been spoken. Those who understood it, understood it. Praise God. Okay. Genuine Christian love honors God. Genuine Christian love makes you to love your brothers and sisters. Even there are differences. Ultimately, what will win? Love will win. Love never fails. I have taught you love is greater than doctrine. Love is greater than personal differences. Love is greater than all these things. It is written in 1 Corinthians 13. Did you get that? Alright. So the second character of genuine Holy Spirit is, what is the first thing? Truth. Agrees with the truth. Now let's read here as the final thing. Let's go. Verses uh, uh, 26. It is written there clearly. You have to tell me what is the genuineness of the Holy Spirit. But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. Quickly, if you really have the Holy Spirit, then why should you worry about memory? Simple thing, starting with that. Because the Holy Spirit, what is the third thing genuine Holy Spirit does? He teaches you. The Holy Spirit is a good teacher. Okay, let me tell about teaching. Are you with me? Three things I said. Number one, truth. He agrees with the truth. Number two, he agrees with love. Number three, he talks about... Okay, that is a side thing. T 
Teach us. Okay, let me tell you this word teach. Let me give you some understanding of teaching. Number one, the word used for teaching, it is, it is taken or translated from the word didasko. Didasko. Say with me, it's a Greek word called didasko. Now, if you will quickly go with me to Matthew in the last chapter. Matthew 28 and last verse. I want to show you two words there. 19 and 20. Let's read 19 and 20 therefore. Let's all read it together. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatever I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Do you see the word teach there twice? How many times do you see in verse 19? Yes, you'd see it once, right? Teach all nations. And then verse 20, teaching them. I want you to know there is a big difference between these two words teaching. Though in English both are taken as teaching from the Greek words from where they have been translated are different. Let me tell you the Greek word from which verse 19 is taken. It is taken from a word called mathetiu. My pronunciation will be very different. I'm, I don't know Greek. I have to learn Greek. Amen. Anyone here knows Greek? Let's pray. Mathetiu. In olden days it was very necessary for pastors and Priest to learn Greek. Greek, Latin, definitely. Latin was very needed. Latin was a very, very important language. And English, which you speak and I speak, this English was a common marketplace language. God has honored English language. I know that. Okay. Mathitiu means to become a student. Go and make disciples of them. Make them, make them disciples. Make them pupil. P-U-P-I-L. So Alice has many pupils. Many students. It means, I love teachers. You know why? Because it's a great thing to teach. One of the good things about teaching is, you will not remember your students. Your students will always remember you. My dad had this wonderful experience. He has taught thousands, right? Definitely thousands of people. One after the other, one after. He doesn't remember all of them. They all remember him. Ooh, you are, ah, that man, that Achan, that professor. I remember him. He taught me. And such and such. Are you so and so son? I said, yeah. And I would run from the scene. That's the good thing about being a teacher. And God is telling us to go and first of all, disciple them. After discipling them, let's go to verse 20. After discipling them, what do we do? Next, you do the didasco. What is the didasco? Imparting into them. I heard somebody saying the other day, it is true. A young pastor was telling an older person, look, I'm not making Pharisees, I'm making disciples. That's the right vision. That is the right vision. We are not called to make Pharisees. We are called to make disciples. Very, very interesting. The, the, most of the, English, the churches in America, they know how to make disciples. It's a good thing. You know, uh, we also should come to that point. We are not coming here to just to listen to some messages and go away. No, no, no. There has to be a discipline where the Holy Spirit can be poured into us. And this is done by the Holy Ghost. Did you get that? We are talking about the genuine Holy Spirit by telling you his nature that the Holy Spirit is a teacher. But before he begins to teach you, you must become his pupil or his student. That is why you are brought into the church. People come into church with different ideas, different backgrounds. They don't know a lot of things. It is the job of the pastor to bring them to a level of discipline. Now you are ready for the Holy Ghost. So three things I told you about the Holy Spirit. Number one, he's a spirit of? Number two, he's a spirit of? Number three, he teaches you. So much from this context. Amen. Remember, people of God, where do we stand? Which part of the Holy Spirit do you have? Which part of the Holy Spirit do you need? In these three days, which we are now two more days, it is your responsibility to find out where you stand and begin to receive that part of the Holy Ghost which you lack. Amen. I have all these things, praise God. He always teaches me, always takes me through. Even giving me all these days of ministry, he still begins to tell me new things. And I want to tell you some exciting things in this day. Children, if you decide to spend time, even at this stage, with God, I told you, Dude, are you doing it? When you're baptized, good. The Holy Spirit will begin to show you things which even pastors may not see. He wants to show you. The Bible says in Psalms 119, Behold, the entrance of your word gives me light. 
All of you young youngsters, all of you church, I would I request you to spend today, tomorrow, till Saturday afternoon. Spend time in Psalms 119. The beauty of God's word is written there. I open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from your law. Where does that come from? The Holy Ghost gives you that. The entrance of your word. What do you mean by entrance of your word? It means the Holy Spirit brings God's word into your heart and deposits there. How many of you like that? And if the word of God is inside you, nobody can take it away. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. We, our church, we are, in the, we are interested in the Holy Spirit. We are a Holy Spirit driven church. We go by the leading of the Holy Spirit. We go by wisdom which is given by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today, that's all I have to say. I have, I'm done with what I have to say. Are you with me? Did you get something today? Hallelujah, children. Did you get something today? Can you lift your hands and praise God? Awesome. Okay. Listen, you need now to exercise what you received. We're all going to take time to minister to one, one another. Amen. We're all going to talk to one another. That means you're going to speak to somebody. And those of you who are anointed, very anointed, I want you to know, when you open your mouth and speak to somebody, out of your belly, innermost being, the Holy Spirit begins to flow onto someone else. The clean Holy Spirit and they'll be blessed and touched. Amen. Okay. Three things I've told you. Let us thank the Lord. I'll quickly pray. And then move on and let us bring our needs. Which part of the Holy Spirit do I need? Sini, which part of the Holy Spirit do you need? Do you need more of his love? Do you need more of his teaching? Or do you need more of his truth? Whatever it is going to fill you tonight with it. Amen. People of God, if you have the Holy Spirit, you have everything. If you have, that is the greatest wealth you can have an anointing. And I want to congratulate all of you who came in this cold evening. You are definitely will be blessed by uh, you're coming today and tomorrow and day after tomorrow we're all going to be in the presence of God I'm really encouraged that so many of us could come tonight look at that look all around you this was the strength of the church at one time amen, amen. hallelujah amen. this is the church of the Lord at one time when last in 2015 when Do Pastor Johnson Vergis came his friend what is his name Freddie Pastor Freddie was telling me you know Pastor Shiju in one of Pastor Johnson's Vergis's mid meeting they have 900 people <laughs> mid meeting and I, when I see a mid-meeting of a church of ours, I am really excited. A mid-meeting. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That is God. God will take you places. God will take us place. Okay. Let's close our eyes right now, saints. Get ready to minister to one another. Say, Lord, give me that part of the Holy Ghost which I need. That part I need to be taught. I want to come into that discipline of God's Holy Spirit. I want to be a man, a woman after God's own heart. Lord, I need more love. Yes. yes, I need more love in my spirit. Or whatever it is, ask the Lord right now. Ask the Lord love. Is it love? Is it truth? More of God's absolute truth? Oh Lord, give me more of your prayer. How to pray. How to pray in the Holy Spirit. Whatever it is. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. As we saw today, let every hidden sin be confessed of. If there is some hidden sin, some weakness that keeps on bothering you, you're trying to shake it away, but you're not able to do it, bring it to Jesus. Bring it to Jesus. The Holy Spirit can just blast it out of you in Jesus. A committed life, saints, a committed life, children, a committed life to Jesus will make a lot of difference. Do not love the world or anything in it. My children, if any of you are hooked up into the internet, if there are sites that you cannot come out of, if there are some habits of watching YouTube, hours and hours and hours, bring it to Jesus. He was going to set you free, set you free, set you free. So that he can pour out his mighty spirit on you and live with you and use you so mightily. Hallelujah. Riba. Bring it, whatever it is, whatever it is, bring it, bring it, bring it to the Lord. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because
Yasi Fasla. Leon, a lot of strain, strain, lot of strain. Can you stand up, my sister? We are going to pray for you as a church. The Lord tells me to pray for you. You are taking a lot of strain, lot of strain. It is not needed, says the Lord. Hand over all your strain to me, says the Lord. Come on, church, pray. Oh, how I love Jesus. Father, I just pray. Our church, maybe they're not here, but there are people who are full of hatred. You know, there is a level of anointing in their heart, but when their anointing begins to come down, hatred begins to come out. Families, husbands, wives living in division. It has been broken in this fasting prayer. The wife says, I can't agree with the husband. I am living my life. I'm living only for my children. Husband says, No, 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 no. She she gave me up. Such things come from hatred. I tell you with the Holy Ghost, we can love anybody. What we need is the Holy Spirit and His love. Anybody we should be able to love people of God. Let it begin in our church. Right now let us pray that every hatred will be moved away from hearts. Every hatred will rush away from our hearts. Even now when we pray. No hatred in the hearts and minds of those who have accepted Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. If you know somebody who's living in hatred, maybe, maybe slow. If you know somebody who's living in hatred, you know what hatred is? I will not, I will not love that person. Sorry, I can't agree with that person. Meaning, you know, talking especially about husbands and wives not here I know but there are people like that in our church no I can't I can't people of God they have to fall in love they have to fall in love yes there is no way out of Christ, of, of, of you know we cannot live a hatred, hatred life I don't agree with so and so I can't love my husband I will not be submissive to my husband I will not value my husband pray for people like that Cover yourself by the blood. Cover yourself by the blood. Everybody in our church should be full of Holy Spirit love. Holy Spirit love. Holy Spirit truth. This is what the Bible says. Wives, submit to your husbands. I want you to know. Now I'm going to make many things. Not the name of the people public. But I want this church to know. In one of our families, that the whole problem is because of one thing. The wife refuses to submit to the husband. I have pleaded with her so many times. Only thing I didn't do, I didn't fall at her feet and hold her feet. But I've, I've told her so many times, please think of your children and submit your husband. No. What is that? That is hatred. There is no egalitarian marriage. You know what egalitarian marriage is? 50% husband, 50% wife. No. It is 100% Jesus Christ. Christian marriage is about 100% Jesus Christ. What he says, yes. Not only what the husband says or the wife says, what Jesus says. Bible says very clearly, husbands love your wives, wives submit to your husbands. And when people oppose that, they are going outside of the Holy Ghost. And hatred and the children begin to go astray. People of God, 
We don't want that in our church. How many people agree with me and say, yes, we will pray for people. Just because a lady refused, she's stubborn. She's stubborn. She's very stubborn. She will not submit to her husband. I pleaded with her. Not once. Not twice. How many times I said, please, as though I need something. <laughs> I said, think of your children, please. Think of generations to come, please. You don't understand me. Okay. God has to interfere. Amen. People of God, let us pray for godly order in our lives through love. Come on, come on, pray, pray, pray. You may know somebody who is going through a problem. I tell you, 100% of problem in this world is because they don't love Jesus Christ and His love in their hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit reign. Come on, you can pray. I will sing and you can pray. Children, I want you to pray. Come on, come on, come on. Pray. Pray against lovelessness. Pray against hatred. Pray against all the works of the
thank you for the Holy Ghost. We acknowledge every claim of the Holy Ghost. We acknowledge in total and entirety the fullness of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the fullness of God in our church. Lord, we know, we acknowledge that this church is planted by you. You will do your way. Lord, I pray that the mighty anointing will flow through this church. A revival will start in this nation. We thank you because you are setting the stage for a big move of the Holy Ghost. And you are going to use us so mightily. God is alive. People will say that God is true. That there is a God. And Lord, we pray for millions of people who will be brought into the kingdom, baptized in the Holy Spirit of love. Lord, this nation, we need love. We pray for our generation, next generation, Lord, in America, all over the world, they need love. They need to know that there is a God who loves them. Where the father has failed, where the mother has failed, where pastors have failed, churches have failed, where organizations have failed, the love of the Holy Spirit. The genuine, clean, pure love of the Holy Spirit. God-centered love of the Holy Spirit is available. Send your love mightily, Lord. Mightily, mightily. Thank you. We are honored tonight, Lord. As we continue to meditate on you, meditate on thy Holy Spirit. Fill us with more insights. Teach us. Bless us. We bless America tonight. We bless every street. We bless Philadelphia tonight. We bless Pennsylvania tonight. The streets that where we live, Lord. Our houses have been kept in those streets. And we pray there will be love and power that will begin to flow all around. And people will begin to know the love of Jesus. Lord, we bless every street where our houses are living. Every street. You have kept us in places there for a purpose that love begin to flow. Thank you, every person here tonight. Lord, when I look back five years ago, the number of people that have come on a Thursday evening, Lord, this is a miracle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're truly grateful. Thank you, Lord, the church is growing. And what we do in 30 years, you can do in one year. You are God who can stop you. Who, who has understood you, Lord? You are God. Amazing God. Thank you. Lord, we specifically bring the baptisms. We are looking forward at least three baptisms. Let that happen. And I pray our the, whoever is baptized will be baptized in the Holy Spirit with power. That they will not have, there will be no gap between water baptism and Holy Spirit baptism. Thank you for touching each one of us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great night.